All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Just kind of reflect on what we talked about. First and foremost, we talked about our WWE Monday Night Raw review. Then we jumped right on into our WWE NXT preview. So our third segment, we're going to talk about our TNA against all odds. You know, it's going to be pretty awesome. Absolutely love TNA. You know, um, you know, I've kind of grown a, you know, I'm kind of a sucker for it. I feel like it has a lot of heart. I feel like it does have a lot of heart. I feel like some of the superstars that are fighting, a lot of people might kind of discredit them and be like, oh, it's it's just, you know, it's just all WWE reject you know trying to you know make a wrestling promotion like kind of happen to kind of stick it to the main guy but you know i don't think that at all honestly i don't think that at all you know the moment i kind of you know i know when i said that they're like that's because that's what you think more like it's like no no that's not what i think at all i think uh, you know the best thing about tna is the passion from the wrestlers you can tell they you know you can tell they care and i'm not saying that wrestlers from other promotions like aew ring of honor uh new japan professional wrestling or wwe doesn't really care but there's just something, you know, TNA, I feel like TNA, they were once in a really, really good spot. And thanks to unfortunate circumstances, they kind of went, you know, a little south. So uh, obviously you have a lot of dedicated fans. You have a lot of dedicated superstars and stuff like that. So you're going to have nothing but uh, nothing but respect for these guys. All right. So let's jump around on into our segment three. We're going to talk about our TNA impact against all odds. So let's do it. So uh, we are at Cesaro Stadium in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, first and foremost, in the promotion, um, you know, not in the promotion, in the uh in the in the pre-sale, not pre-sale, in a pre-show, you saw Sammy Callahan defeat Jonathan Grisham, and then you also saw the return of uh, Kushida, which is you know kind of pretty cool. I've read articles about Kushida. Definitely, you know, he's electric. He, although he might not be, you know, the the you know the hottest ticket, you know, to return to the TNA Impact. Obviously, you know what happened later on, and we're going to talk about it. But you know, I he's a great wrestler. He's a great wrestler. You know, definitely a lot of you know abilities. Kind of, I would love to see him kind of challenge Mustafa Ali for the X Division Championship. But you know, obviously that's just you know my opinion. Next, we have the Knockouts World Tag Team Champions Alicia Edwards and Masha Slamovich. Um, retained against the Hex, Allison K and Marty Bell. I like you know. I feel like right now. After Slamovich and also, uh, you know, Alicia Edwards dethroned Spitfire because Spitfire, Spitfire was doing really, really well. They were the top of the WWE world and not the WWE, the, the TNA knockouts, you know, tag team championship contention. And I don't know they did really, really well. And I feel like they've, um, you know, kind of held it on their own. I don't know if any of them are going to make a jump into singles, but these girls are strong, man. These girls are strong. I can very much see one of them, you know, kind of try to go after the, you know, um, you know, tr- just go after something different. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe a shot at Jordan Grace, maybe. But, you know, obviously that's just me. I would love to see, uh, you know, Alicia Edwards kind of branch out or mash uh, Slambovich to kind of do that. But next we have Mike Santana and Steve Macklin defeats the Rascals. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I watched this pay per view. I watched all of the against all odds. Actually, that's why I was kind of like you know so adamant. I'm telling you guys that something that you love, you like. Obviously, you see Tom Han- 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 the Tom Hannafin Hannigan Hannigan. He was a former W. Todd 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 Tom Tom Todd. I'm just gonna say that for like the next 45 minutes. Tom. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um. You can just sense the heart and, uh, you know, a lot of good things coming out of TNA. Um, Maybe they found a new partner with WWE NXT. Hopefully, you know, that kind of goes further than that. But after the match, you saw the ultimate display of respect. You saw, um, you know, you saw Steve Macklin exerting his, uh, you know, his palm ready for a handshake for Mike Santana. The handshake, this washed out. Pretty awesome. You see two great superstars, you know, coming together to fight an ultimate, like kind of like a, you know, kind of like a worser entity, kind of like how you saw the Avengers is a fucking freaking, sorry, freaking Thanos and stuff like that. So <laughs> next we see PCO. PCO comes out. Obviously PCO wants a shot at AJ Francis's digital media championship. But of course you kind of have to send out the, you know, kind of, you know, kind of like the representative, kind of the guy that takes the beatings. You saw Rick Swan go out there. He put up a good match, but ultimately PCO was able to, uh, you know, kind of take care of business. You know, the Frankenstein. Like, I thought that was pretty cool. His entrance was pretty badass, to be honest. I thought that was pretty cool how they did that. Then you saw Steph D. Launder come out and accept, 
she said, wee, like, it's, you know, wee, like, I thought that was pretty cool how she said it in French. I think it's, a, you know, I think PCO is French Canadian. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But, um, you know, they're, you know, they're kind of hitting sort of romantic storyline. That'd be pretty cool. Or maybe Steph DeLonder looking under, you know, as your GSMC Wrestling Lawyer podcast host. I feel like I have to be your uh, professional wrestling honesty broker. Sometimes I feel like Steph D. Launder's kind of luring PCO through romantic kind of, um, you know, romanticisms and actions and, uh, you know, her intentions. Uh, you know, obviously it, she could be working for AJ Francis. I don't want it to happen because I don't want to break PCO's heart. He's a fragile soul. He's a fragile soul. But I don't know. It's a very much possibility, obviously, building up more, uh, building up more momentum for them to once, you know, once again fight heading toward the future of, you know, TNA Impact. Then we saw the TNA World Tag Team Champions, the system, retain against Nick and Ryan Emmett. And I was absolutely dis I was disgusted. I was disgusted. I saw Dirty Dango come out, you know, doing his dirty dango stuff, showing the, you know, align him aligning himself with the system. And, you know, why, dude? Why is that is that? You know, not, you know, I'm going to cross the forbidden door here. Is that Breezango? Is that the guy from uh, WWE? Let me know in the comment section if, uh, you know, if Dirty Dango is a, uh, is a uh, fun, there you go, fun dango, fun dango. Like, I feel like he is. He looks a little bigger, though. He looks a little buffer. Would be fun, Dongo, and it makes sense because dirty Dongo. But you know, then again, you may never know. Maybe this guy, you know, swallowed a whole bunch of like you know Hulk Hogan pills or whatever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Moving on. So next we see Frankie Kazarian. Frankie Kazarian against Joe Hendry. Thanks to the brass knucks, um, you know, Frankie Kazarian kind of fills in that role of like like the best, one of the best heel guys that I feel like TNA kind of has. But like what I've kind of compared him to before was kind of like a kind of like a Randy Orton, where he's not gonna do things that necessarily pleases the fans, but he's not gonna necessarily do things that like um that an ordinary heel really does in terms of uh, you know, TNA impact. So I feel like his kind of scope is kind of wide open, but he ultimately defeated Joe Henry with the brass knucks. And now he has a Chicago street fight against, you know, a steel uh, at TNA impact. So it was going to be pretty awesome. I loved how steel was like, Oh, like right to the face. It's like, that's what you get, Kazarian, bro. Don't ever use those brass knucks, man. You know, are you a Logan Paul or what? Like, just kidding. Um, then, then we see Mustafa Ali once again. He retains the X Division Championship. I kind of knew Trent Seven wasn't really gonna have a chance against Mustafa Ali for the championship, but you know, a guy from you know Speedball Mountain, um, I you know he only someone could dream, only someone could dream. So you know, definitely loved how he put up a fight. It was a good match. It was a decent match. Got to be honest. Next we see WWE. We NXT Tatum Paxley answers Jordan Grace's open challenge for the TNA Knockouts World Championship. You know, ultimately, kind of a mistake by Tatum Paxley. You know, getting Jordan Grace pissed off. You cost her uh, at WWE NXT Battleground for a chance to kind of, you know, kind of show that TNA is more than just you know washed up WWE superstars. And like I said, I don't believe that. I read it online. I hear it on social media. You know, when I comment on you know uh, TikTok, Twitter slash X or Instagram, there's always that one person that's like, oh, these are just like washed up WWE. And like I said before, it's not true. But uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Like Tatum Paxley, I wanted somebody bigger from WWE NXT to kind of make it over across the, you know, for, you know, for that to kind of happen. And I, you know, I reiterate on this over and over again. I think I actually did like a three minute segment on it, like last uh you know, last my last podcast when I was reviewing uh, TNA against all odds, but I would have loved to see Natalia. I would have loved to see Natalia if they seen Natalia Neidhart from the Hart Foundation. Royalty, wrestling royalty. You see her come out and challenge Jordan Grace. Oh my God! I'm, you know, I'm not hating on Tatum Paxley. I'm not, not, but. I feel like it would have been better. I feel like it would have, um, you know, it would have been, uh, it would have made WWE NXT a little more prestigious. Also, at the same time, making TNA Impact a little more prestigious. But it didn't really happen, and it kind of sucks. I would have loved to see Natalia go out there, or like a surprise from Charlotte Flair. <sighs> that wasn't gonna happen. But um, you know, a guy can dream. A guy can dream. Uh, so lastly, we have Moose once again. Moose. 
Moose, the TNA Impact World Heavyweight Champion. Once again, he retains against the, you know, Matt Hardy, the broken Matt Hardy. After the match, you saw the system come out, completely kick Matt Hardy's ass. And then you saw, um, you know, Joe Henry. You saw the Nemeth brothers come out to no avail. The system became out. And then once all hope was lost, you saw Brother Nero, Jeff Hardy, come out and just... Bam, 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 bam. Uh, it's pretty cool. I feel like Jeff Hardy belongs in TNA a thousand and ten percent. So I there might be speculation on him being in the 25 man battle royal tonight for WWE NXT. There might not be, but you know, um, I feel like that's the you know, that's the moral of the story. A guy can dream, like a guy can dream on this podcast, guys. Well, guys, do not go anywhere. We're going to meet and greet the Wyatt Six. We're going to talk about the you know, the newly formed faction. We're going to talk about some of the you know, some of the dividends they're going to pay on the Monday night roster. So, hey, do not go anywhere.